Hi guys, it's Amber here from Spoilt Scale Reptiles. Today we're going to show you our newest additions. I don't usually put myself in front of the camera, but I thought it was too exciting not to share. So we have just acquired four beautiful little carrot tail viper geckos in this box. I will show you a close up of them when we're introducing them into their new home and uh, I'm sure you'll share the excitement that we do. So we just wanted to talk about today what we're going to be doing for their setup. So first things first, whilst they're still babies, we're going to be using this paludarium. So you can see here, we actually got this paludarium when we rescued a crested gecko, he came in this. So this is going to be their temporary home. We're also going to be putting 7% UVB using a shade dweller it's very important that all reptiles have UVB. We also have a bit of slate for decoration. This is actually just a coaster from the pound shop. My favourite, I love these. So we've got some coconut flower stems. They look great in any setup. You can use them in desert sort of setups or you can use them in sort of jungle setups as well. We've got four nice bits of cork bark here. So this species love flat cork. We've got a little water dish for them because they are teeny weeny, so you don't need anything bigger than this. The substrate we're gonna be using is Leo Life. That's heavy. So what we're gonna be doing is just testing it with Leo Life because we've heard mixed things. Some of the Viper geckos prefer the bio desert, which means you have a little bit of soil and sand mix. A lot of people have said that they prefer just sand, so we're gonna give Leo Life a go. We also have a nice bit of cork, cork tubing, cork log, cork branch, that's the word I'm looking for. So we've got cork branch that we're going to put in there as well. And I am going to be using some real plants in this setup. So as soon as I go and get those, we'll show you those as well. But for now, just for a bit of decoration, we're going to use this artificial berry. Okay, so now we're just going to show you a quick video of me building the setup and then introducing our little babies. Okay guys, we're back. So, first things first is substrate. So I've cleaned this with reptile antibacterial spray. So I've done that prior to the video. Now we're just gonna be using the sand substrate and just making sure it's spread out evenly in there. It's very heavy, so you'll have to bear with me before I spill it all everywhere. So they don't need a thick substrate, but they do need enough just in case they want to have a little dig. Quite like this stuff actually. So now we've got the substrate in place, it's time for the decorative pieces. So we're using the cork flats to try and create some little caves and crevices for them. They like being in tight spaces, but we also want to make sure there's lots of substrate showing so that they can burrow if they want to, they can dig if they want to, but also they've got lots of room to run around. So I'm quite happy with how those cork flats are sitting now. So we've got a little bridge there, got some overlapping, so it creates loads of little caves for them. And now I want to put the cork branch in because we want to make it a little bit higher for them just so they can bask under the UVB if they'd like to. Their water bowl needs to be on the cool side because we don't want to create any unnecessary humidity. And my favourite part is putting these coconut stems in. So these are more for decorative purposes rather than the gecko's purpose, although I'm sure they'll enjoy climbing over them anyway. So I'm just going to pop them around, make sure that we're happy with the placement Make sure that none of the branches are going to fall if they're knocked or the, the fulnarium's knocked for any reason. We don't want any squashed little geckos. So we're just putting the flower corks in. I'm going to cut this one because I don't necessarily need the stem as long. I'd like it sticking up, although I'm not sure it's going to stay sticking up. We also want to be careful not to put any of the 
decorations near the vents of the fornarium because we don't want any of the little crickets getting out. And the berries, I'm not overly happy with how the berries are going to sit with it being on the stem. So I've decided to pull the berries off. I did attempt to cut the stem but it is made out of wire so it wasn't happening with my scissors. So I'm just going to pull some little bits of berry off and just put them around. Again, this is purely for decorative purposes. You would not need this if you were going to put this in your setup. So whilst I'm very, very slowly putting the berries in the fornarium, making it look all pretty, let us know in the comments if you've got any facts about these geckos. I have a few myself, but we always like to learn more. Also let us know in the comments if you've got any ideas of names. We haven't got a clue how we're going to tell them apart. They do have very similar markings, but we haven't got any names yet. So let us know in the comments if there is a good idea you've got for a lovely, unusual name. So now the berries are all placed, it's time for the fun part for introducing our babies. So they come to us in a cricket box on moist paper towel, which is quite common if you're buying a reptile from a reptile shop. Just want to show you them. Look how beautiful they are, and they are tiny. When I tell you they literally sit on a finger each, and they take up the same sort of size as a finger now. But you can see there, they're very, very similar in shape and size. We're not too sure if we've got males or females yet. We think we've got a mixture but they're a little bit too young to sex at the moment. You have to be so, so delicate with them because they are tiny and you don't want to squeeze them. You just have to make sure that you are very, very gentle with them. Although they are quite tame and calm, apart from that one. Little jumpy one. He's the smallest as well. I say he, could be a she. And last but not least, and they have done a nice little poo in there for me. There we go, so they're in. All done, now we can let them explore. So I almost forgot to put the slate in, so we wanna use this slate, one for decoration, and two because slate is a very good conductor for heat. It makes a good basking area, but also if we put it at an angle, it'll make a different sort of shaped cave for them as well. So I'm gonna pop that in the corner in a second. But whilst you watch them explore, I just wanted to give you five facts that we found out about the carrot tail viper geckos. So their Latin name is Hemidactylus imbricactus. Although I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, so I'm going to put it on the screen for you to have a look there. And they are found mainly in Pakistan. They're a communal gecko, meaning you can keep them in groups. You can keep males and females together, which in the reptile hobby is very, very unusual. So we really like that about them. And you can also introduce them at later stages. As long as they're similar sizes, you can introduce them as long as you've got a big enough vivarium to cope with and house as many as you're going to have. They are insectivores, like most geckos, and they're very good hunters. They thrive on crickets, locusts, and mealworms, but a varied diet for all reptiles is always good. They are small and delicate. Adults only get to about three inches. They averagely weigh less than six grams, which is tiny weeny weeny. So it means they're really, really fragile, and that's why they prefer their small hiding places. So a lot of geckos, when they're using their hides, like to feel um, claustrophobic, I suppose is the right word to use. They like to have at least their back or their bottom or their towel touching the top or side of the caves. So that's why smaller caves are good, especially for the smaller style geckos. And lastly, they are known as carrot tail geckos due to their plump tails. And they are known as the viper gecko and they get their name of this because of their viper like scales on their body. So you can see some close ups just whilst they were exploring and you can see obviously they are really fragile to pick up. But we hope you've liked this video and we hope it has helped you if you're thinking about getting some viper geckos or even just out of curiosity because I've never come across this species before. Please make sure you like the page, subscribe and keep an eye out for all of our future content. We've got exciting stuff coming soon. 
Thank you all for watching. Bye.